President Obama has a conference call with Democratic leaders tonight. He told them in an email, it is time to get ready to fight. Senator Bernie Sanders is laying out his agenda for the next four years. His presidential campaign won 22 states before losing the nomination to Hillary Clinton. More than 13 million people voted for him. He writes about the campaign and what comes next in his new book. It's called Our Revolution, A Future to Believe In. Senator Sanders is back at the table. We're glad to have you here, Senator. It's good to be with you. We were just talking to your lovely wife, Jane, in the green room, and she says you, too, stayed up like a lot of people, very late to watch the returns. And it started out as, you know, Senator, a coronation for her. We heard words, it's a lock, it's a route, it's going to be her night. By the end of the night, we all know it went, it turned south very, very uh, quickly, we could say, by the end of the day. Uh, let's not forget, in the midst of that dismal night, she did end up winning more votes than Mr. Yeah, she, ha she did win the popular vote. But ultimately, what do you think went wrong? Today she's blaming James Comey in the, the letters. This is what I think went wrong, is what Trump did uh, very effectively is tap the angst and the anger and the hurt and the pain that millions of working class people are feeling. And what he said is, I, Donald Trump, I'm going to be a champion of the working class. That's the word he used. I know you're working longer hours for low wages. You're seeing your jobs go to China. You can't afford child care. Can't afford to send your kids to college. I, Donald Trump, alone, I can solve these problems. But what we are going to do, Gail, we're going to hold Mr. Trump accountable. We have all the things that he said. And we are going to say to Mr. Trump, if you have the courage to actually stand up to the big money interest of the billionaire class, if you have the courage to, in fact, develop policies that will improve lives for working people, count us in. I'm going to work with you. You want to rebuild the infrastructure? You want to raise wages? You want to end the disastrous trade policies which send our jobs to China? You want pay equity for women? We're on your side. But are you surprised that a billionaire could connect so well when the Democrats could not? To the it's a fair class. question. On the other hand, what you're looking at is a guy who utilized the media, manipulated the media very well. He is an entertainer. He is a professional at that. Uh, but I will tell you that I think there needs to be a for profound change in the way the Democratic Party does business. It is not good enough to have a liberal elite. I come from the white working class, and I am deeply humiliated that the Democratic Party cannot talk to the people from where I came from. Therefore, do you believe that if you'd been the candidate, you would have won? Hindsight is, is great, Charlie. I don't know the answer to that. Maybe, maybe not. But this is what I do know. I know that there are, that the Democratic Party has got to stand with the working people of this country, feel their pain, and take on the billionaire class, take on Wall Street, take on the drug companies. You know, it is very easy, and this is what I feel, very easy for a president to take on little girls who wear uh, headscarves, who are Muslim, take on uh, Latinos and, 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 and minorities. A little bit harder to take on Wall Street and the drug companies and the insurance companies. And I challenge Mr. But Trump. But Secretary Clinton doesn't say that. She says they had momentum going into the last week, uh, and it was, in fact, what happened with James Comey is the reason but that's they a, lost. that's a minor look at why that's, should you have to worry you about don't that's agree with their that. analysis. It's not a question of what happens in the last week. The question is that she should have won this election by 10 percentage points. The question is why it is that millions of white working class people who voted for Obama turned their backs on the Democratic Party. And I think a lot of people do not think the Democratic Party is standing with them. That has got to change. That is among other reasons why I'm supporting Keith Ellison, who will shake up the Democratic Party. I mean, this is the memo from Hillary Clinton's team, which they do blame James Comey, because we saw that voters in the last week uh, broke for Donald Trump. Again, back to this original question of trust, whether they trust Hillary Clinton, whether they trust her as a change agent. How long was the primary between the two of you? Did it last? A long time. A long time. Mm -hmm. Do you bear some responsibility in raising some of those concerns? Do you feel any guilt about her loss? <laughs> Well, I guess if we believe that somebody who the establishment brings forward has a right to be anointed and nobody should run against her, I guess yes. If we believe in democracy, we have a vigorous debate on the ideas. In fact, I think at the end of the day, by talking about income and wealth inequality, by talking about the need to make public colleges and universities tuition free, by talking about the fact that we are the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all people's right, we ended up making her a stronger candidate. And she adopted your proposal. That's right. She uh, adopted your yeah. proposal on, on, on colleges. Millennials uh, supported you in droves in your campaign. They were part of the Obama coalition. They didn't turn out for Hillary Clinton. Why is that? Well, I think, first of all, I have to say, it in my book, 
um, our revolution. I, I make this point. I ended the campaign more optimistic than I began. Mm -hmm. And I saw so many beautiful young people who are the least prejudiced generation in the history of this country, who want us to deal. Let me tell you something else. When we talk about Mr. Trump, media doesn't talk about this much. What this guy is talking about in terms of climate change should frighten not only the people in this country, but around the world. Because if the president of the United States does not believe that climate change is real, if he is not going to be aggressive in transforming our energy system, that's a lesson. That's a message that goes to the entire world. I worry very much about the future of this planet and what life is going to be like for your kids and your grandchildren. So we have got to rally the young people who will lead this effort to tell Mr. Trump, sorry, we want the planet that our kids and grandchildren will be living in. Are you encouraged to, to see that he seems to be open to other ideas after meeting with the president? Yes. He said, I will maybe reconsider some of my... He is under luck. I mean, clearly, in a thousand ways, his campaign was very unusual. It was very dominated by himself. He developed it. I would hope this is nobody's fool. This is a smart guy. I would hope that he will reach out to the scientific community and say, tell me, what is going on with climate change? There's some people talking about changing uh, the way we take care of elections, the way we count elections. Should the Electoral College be abolished? I'll tell you this, Charlie. Uh, I would hope that everybody in this country would think about not only the fact that Hillary Clinton ended up with more votes than Mr. Trump, but second of all, that essentially the campaign, and I ran around the country for Hillary Clinton, 15 states. State of Vermont's a Democratic state. Nobody paid attention to us. Wyoming is a Republican state. Nobody paid attention to Wyoming. I thought we were 50 states, and I think candidates should be campaigning in 50 states. So, yeah, I think this is something we should be thinking about. Have you spoken to, think to Hillary Clinton? We should think about changing the Electoral College. I think we should. The answer is I think <clears throat> a campaign for president should not be in 15 states in this country. Have you what spoken you to Hillary Clinton? Not yet, I have not. I you have not? You have not spoken to her? Um, what will you do in the United States Senate if they move forward on trying these mass deportations that Donald Trump said he supports on 60 Minutes. We will resist that. All right. It is this country faces very serious problems. Middle class is shrinking. Too many people living in poverty. Kids can't afford to go to climate, uh, go to college. Climate change is there. We have to deal with those problems. We don't have to divide this country up by having one group picking on people because they're Latinos or Muslims or African-Americans. That's not what this country is going to be about. And I will do everything in my power to see that we come together and not let Mr. Trump or anyone else divide us up. Will you Senator run again? Sanders, thank will you, you run so again? much. A little bit early to be talking about that. <laughs> really? Thank you. Yeah, that's not a no. Okay. Thank you, Senator Sanders. Thank you.